many of us were looking for a church home when we came down here? We're just trying to find out what they got to say. That's right. And here's some other weird group. I guess I'm going to go down there so Joe will leave me alone. But you had some friend that kept bothering you and bothering you. Finally, you came down with the sole intent of shutting his mouth and getting him off your back. Exactly. The next thing you know, you turn around, you got a pointer in your hand talking about the two men of the I tell you this too, if somebody doesn't want to beat up, if you do not want to accept the truth, if you do not want to be a part of something that is the truth, this is not the place to be. Right. Is that right? If you rather live a lie, then you pop up and hit the door. Right. But we don't play that down here. We're not trying to satisfy or please anybody but our Heavenly Father Yahweh. So we got stuck. We found out there was a supernal nature, our makeup of our Creator. We found out that instead of Him being three separate individuals, that He's one spirit in three states. We found out, for sake of understanding, just bear with me now, that Yahweh exists in a pure spirit state. He's symbolized by a cloud, having no particular or descriptive shape or form. We found out that he manifest as a spirit man, having no flesh, no blood, no bone, but could be seen in a vision. We found out that this same spirit man who created the heavens and the earth got in a body and walked in the very creation that he created. We found that out down here. And not just words, but the ability to prove it. Let's give you one example. Uh, John, I think it's the third chapter, if I have told you of earthly things, or you must be, if I have told you earthly things, how can you understand that? 3 and 12? John 3 12. John 3 and 12. If I have told you earthly things. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I gotta say one other thing about this name. But I didn't do no long, drawn explanation. But this is how, this is how wise Yahweh is. He is wisdom itself. This is this is how he did it. In other words, y'all, we can slip up on him. Our father used to say this. I just, excuse me. He said that his sword was so sharp, he could cut your head off, and you wouldn't even know you were cut. And then he would joke with us. He said, now, I come through, and when I cut, I get the job done. Now, somebody will go all the way down the street, down the steps to the street, and they'll be saying, he missed me. He said, no, I didn't. Shake your head. <laughs> That's how sharp his stuff was, where you couldn't miss for being cut. Now, this is how Yahweh works. This name Yahweh, the abbreviation for it is Yah. That's the abbreviated form. And in his prophets, like Isaiah, Jeremiah, Obadiah, he put his name right in theirs. Is that right? And then all the Christian doom is going around talking about hallelujah. Now hallelujah means praise be to God. So they say. But if it had been praise be to God, it should have been hallelujah. Is that right? Now I told you, remember I told you he was going to say, shame on me. You say, praise the Lord. Glory. Glory to the Lord. God is real. Hallelujah. Yeah. Well, I got you. Now you said it. Is that right? You've been saying it all your life. And talking about, I knew, I, I, I'll go with no Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And look at the jerk. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cut your head off. And you're too stupid to know it. Take your head, fool. I'm not talking to nobody personally when I say fool. So I'm telling you how do how goofy we were. We didn't know. And we didn't decide to be wrong. We didn't want to be wrong. We had been lied to all our lives. And we found out about it. We were upset too. And everybody else that comes to that knowledge will be upset. But I'm trying to tell you how sharp his knife is. Shoot! I ain't never calling no name like that. I've been following the Lord all my life. Lord God Jesus, I was born saying, Lord God Jesus, that's what my mama said, my grandmama said, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, we got you. <laughs> Yahweh, we serve 
You don't get around him, no. You can't get around him. All right, John 1 and 1. In the beginning was the Word. Now here we're reading out the Bible. In the beginning was the Word. That's the spirit man. Ooh, and the Word was with Yahweh. And this Word was with Yahweh. All right. And the Word was Yahweh. And this Word was Yahweh. In other words, this cloud which symbolizes Yahweh. You can't understand nothing about that. You manifest here when you see a shape and form in a vision. But he's trying to let us know that this and this really are the same thing. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh and the word was Yahweh. Read it. The same was in the beginning with Yahweh. All, right. All things were made by him. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. All right, so that lets us know that Yahweh is symbolized by this cloud. And the word, really truly they're the same one. 14th verse. And the word was made flesh. And this word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. And dwelt among us. Now, it didn't say this word had a baby. It said this word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Get the 10th verse. He was in the world. He. Listen to this. In the beginning was the word. The word was with Yahweh. The word was Yahweh. He, which is the word, right. was in the world. Read. And the world was made by him. And the world was made by him. And the world knew him not. Didn't he know who he was? Are you with me? Yeah. Who was that that was walking around in the body? That was the same one that created the creation. Right. Had the power to get in the body <laughs> and walk around the creation as he created. Somebody said, I don't believe it. And neither did they. Is that right? 2,000 years ago, they didn't believe it either. In fact, they thought he was the devil. When they put him out there on the cross and crucified him, they thought they were doing a good thing by getting rid of that old demon. Is that right? Because they didn't know who they were dealing with. Is that right? He gave them plenty of proof of who he was dealing with. Because he did stuff like this. Shit. Out there fishing with his disciples. The winds and the waves. About to tear the ship up. Is that right? He's playing sleep. Uh -huh. I say playing sleep. But if you know who he is, he don't sleep. Don't need none, John. You don't need to get no nap. You need a nap, not Yahweh. Is that right? And if he did nap, what would happen to this world? Is that right? Something inside this world. What happened? Yahweh overslept. We got a friend, don't need no sleep. We got to get up. And that ain't going to be for too much longer. We don't need none either. That's right. That's right. But you know what's being regenerated when you go to sleep in this body? Yes. It's the physical part of you that needs the rest. <laughs> and even when your physical body is resting, isn't your mind still working? Because your mind is sending signals down to keep the heart beating and the lungs breathing. And if this brain or this mind is representative of spirit, then you can see spirit don't rest. Right. Spirit don't sleep. Because if it did sleep, who would be handling the business? That's right. 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 Down in the boat playing sleep. <laughs> they woke him, you know, but even if you were sleeping, when all that boat's tossing and turning and thundering and lightning, wouldn't that have woken you up? Yeah. Woken? <laughs> That's New Orleans. I don't know nothing about that up here. Now, here, Hutton could speak. 
and everybody that had something in the stock market that was trying to make some more money would listen. <laughs> but the winds and the waves wouldn't listen to me. Yeah. Is that right? When y'all waves speaks, he speaks to y'all. You know what? He got the winds whipping, y'all say, y'all cut it out. Right. <laughs> oh man, that's, that's the creator there. Is that right? You don't find no man like that. So when they ask what man a man is this, forget it being a man. And while we're on it, since I'm getting close to it, since I'm in the neighborhood, go over there in Joshua, I believe it is, where they were fighting against the man and Joshua stood up and had the sun stand still. Joshua 10 and 12. All right, thank you. Then spake Joshua to Yahweh in the day when Yahweh delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. Uh -huh. And he said in the sight of Israel, Read. Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon. Son, stand still. Read. And thou moon in the valley of Absalom. Moon, you hold up. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. And the sun stood still. <laughs> Mankind right now got power. They can do a whole lot of stuff. Uh, some of the stuff man has the power to do is absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. right, taking these rockets and spaceships all off into the space, mm -hmm. going out there into space and fixing stuff, mm -hmm. you know, on the space station. Mm -hmm. That's not some miraculous stuff. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to do more. They want to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. You know, they can, they can send a robot up to Mars and operate from down here on Earth. Mm -hmm. Tell it to go right, pick up a stone, and bring it back and clear the bed of the truck. That's bad. <laughs> Most of us can't operate it if we're looking at it. Right. Is that right? <laughs> you ever heard any rumors of them planning on seeing if they can get the sun to stand still for a day? <laughs> yeah. As bad as they are, they ain't talking about we gonna make the sun stand still one day. No, you ain't you ain't even that crazy to think you can do that. Is that right? But here Joshua stands up in the sun and the moon. Stand still for him. Well, let's, I'm going to let you read it. And, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand thou still upon Gibeon, and thou moon in the valley of Absalom. Oh, folks, and I'm, 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 still, I'm, I'm still really interested in those that are with us for the first time getting something out of what I'm saying. But I'm, I'm having trouble right now. Now, this is, this, this is my point. We have come to recognize that Joshua is Yahweh in the body. That's why I'm, my point is that Yahweh can get in the body. He got in this body of Joshua the Messiah, our Savior. He was also in the body of Joshua the Son of Nun. Now, he did not have to ask verbally for the sun to stand still nor the moon. Is that right? Because when he brought him to creation, did he have to speak it? He just willed it to be. Boom, it was there. All we got to do is get up and Sun stand still. But what he wanted them to know is that that was him in the flesh. So he got up and said, Yahweh, will you please stop the sun? That's why he said he did it in the sight of Israel. Is that right? He had to make it obvious where the command was coming from. Otherwise, they would have thought it was some freak of nature. Is that right? Are you following? So he had to do it that way to make sure they gave honor and glory to Yahweh being in a body. Right. So let's read it. And the sun stood still. The sun stood still. And the moon stayed. Moon stayed. Until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. Read. Is not this written in the book of Jasher? Read. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven. Uh-huh. And has not to go down about a whole day. Now listen to this next part. And there was no day like that before. There was no day like that before. Or since that Yahweh hearkened unto the voice of a man. That Yahweh listened to a man. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Let me tell you, there ain't no day before or since, and not including that day, that Yahweh listened to the voice of a man. Are you with me? Yahweh never regarded no flesh. But what you got to realize is that wasn't a man. That was Yahweh the body. He created it. He can stop it whenever he wants to. Is that right? Y'all ain't listening to no voice of man before or since, and including that day. Is that right? Had to be Yahweh in there to command the sun to stand still because he made them. Then he comes down to the Lord of the Virgin Mary, peace be still. Who is that man? Same one that made them. Is that right? Are you with me? And no man can tell Yahweh what to do. Right. 
1974. Man, my wife and I moved to New Orleans to start a school. We didn't know anything. We thought we did. 20 years old, not even drive behind the ear. $600 total assets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and everything else we had, we shipped it in boxes or put it in our car, mm -hmm. and that's how we arrived. Now, I've got, I've got to give you some history. Oh, all, right. Right. Well, all I can think about, as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned, is what Job said, naked I came yeah. in, yeah. naked I go out. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I came yeah. in with a car full of my personal yeah. belongings. Say my name? Yeah. Tell me it ain't been to the praise and glory of Yahweh. Yeah. Right, somebody trying to bad mouth Yahweh. Look what he did to y'all. Oh. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look what he did. Give us some new spirit. That's a wonderful right. thing. Right. Yeah, right, you're looking at the wrong stuff. Right. That's right. 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 The wrong stuff is really looking like I did. Yes. Right. Right. It's Yahweh yes. right. having brought us through and giving us right. a new spirit. Right. 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 I'm getting there, West. Yeah. I'm getting there. I gotta step a little bit. I ain't, I ain't going too fast. Yeah. But I got a story to tell about the glory of my father. You ought to have a story to tell about the glory of your father. And shame on you if you don't. I'm not in this. I never have been in it for a kickback or a joke. I'm, I'm real about it. Is that right? Whatever that brings me. Whatever ridicule. Whatever laughter. Whatever hardship. Whatever pain. I'm in it all the way. That's right. I'm in it all That's the way. Right. Somebody said, well, aren't you just getting ready to give up the branch? I'm in it all the way. That's right. ain't about no branch. It never has been. I'll right. tell you about that in a minute, too. I'll tell you about that in a minute as soon as I get there. Now, we moved there in May of 1974. My wife's from North Louisiana up here at a place called Athens here in Monroe, right off I-2, a little bit north. We met in California in 73. We met in about March or April. And uh, since time was so short, <laughs> you have to find somebody that you really love, you would really grab. Them. You, know, you might not get no wife if you fool around with no long courtship. <laughs> so we met in November, about six months courtship. Six months from there, we were packing up our stuff, moving to New Orleans. We got there May 23rd. A couple months later, the beginning of the end of August. First part of September, we had some visitors come from Los Angeles. Raymond Ratliff, who is still there, and Kevin Brown, both of them still in class. We're sitting at the house watching TV, talking about the gospel. They had a hurricane coming to New Orleans, and they said this was what they call the worst case scenario one that comes straight up the mouth and across Lake Pontchartrain. That's right. That thing was bearing down on the city like nobody's business. We was just a cushion. And uh, we're sitting there talking about the gospel. Now before Gregory left, going to Los Angeles, and then going to come to New Orleans, Dr. King told Dr. Kelly, he said, well, I'm going to New Orleans. He said, oh, okay, well, that's good. He said, well, I'm going to put a surprise on you to write it down there. And Gregory just laughed. He didn't really attach any significance to it. This hurricane thing, man, was coming straight. It wasn't coming from the side like this last one did. It was coming here in the water, they were going boom, 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 boom. It wasn't moving left or right, just straight up. We were watching it every day. Is that right? And coming from California, we know earthquakes, we don't know hurricanes. And at 20 years old, there's a whole lot of stuff you don't know anyway. So we just said, we talking about the God. How do I know? And they get over there in Isaiah, such and such, and stuff on earth. We're watching it, but it's like background. <laughs> so uh, finally, uh, I, just, I told him, I said, well, I'm going to go around to the store and pick up some, some uh, we, we call them cold drinks. Mm -hmm. At that time, we used to call them pop. Mm -hmm. I got corrected. 
going around the store to get some pop. I think 74 was pop. Right. And I walk out the door. Now, mind when we hadn't opened the door or window, we were just talking. I walked out the door and I looked around. All the windows are boarded up, the doors are boarded up, people got tape on their window. Now I'm saying, what is this? I said, hey, y'all, look at this.
I'm going to do something I got little enough sense to say was a prophet. The voice, the, the winds ain't listened to no prophet before. Right. Right. Well, well, show me a scripture where the prophet got up and said, Peace be still, and the winds listened to him and obeyed. Right. The only one the winds and waves will listen to is their creator. Right. Is that right? So that gave us 31 years of mercy mm -hmm. so we could get an understanding. And not just us. Right. Mm -hmm. right. But this, this oftentimes comes across arrogantly, but it's the truth. Yes. Is that right? That saves three part two. You're talking about how Yahweh saved New Orleans, he saved you. Right. Boy, that's where your school came out of, New Orleans. No New Orleans, no three part. Right. Right. So count yourself in there. Right. But Yahweh stopped that hurricane. So you Let's play it right. If we don't play the game, play it right. Or get out the ring. That's right. Your salvation was done right down there in manifestation. But in reality, it was done from the foundation of the world. That's why I said Yahweh ordained it from the foundation of the world. And guess what? If the wind, if the wave hits it, guess who had to get permission? You can get them. That's right. That's all right. I know if you said don't hit. Everybody, even people that don't know nothing about their school, know that New Orleans should have been gone. Is that right? Look how many scares we had. That's why so many victims are down there. They've been crying, whoa, 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 whoa. This hit the big one, the big one, the big one. But nothing happened. So they come along now and say, this is a big one, you better get out. You're going to cry and whoop so much, you can see why nobody believes you. That's right. So he gave us mercy so that we could have his spirit formed in us. And I'm trying to tell you, the same one who spared us and saved us from his wrath is the same one that has every right to say, after I've given them due mercy, now it's time to go. Yes. Yes. And I don't think that anybody in their right mind could be mad. Yes. Like the book says, what would, it, what, what would it be if you gained the whole world and lost your soul? Wouldn't that be terrible? But great would it be if you gained your soul and lose the whole world? Is that right? Wouldn't it be better to be saved and lose the whole world? Is that right? Are you here? No. Is that right? So he spared you, didn't he? So I just can't get used to not having a house. Oh, yeah. well, you might as well start to get right. <laughs> Because Paul in 1 Corinthians 2nd, 2nd Corinthians 5th chapter, didn't he say, don't you know that your earthly house is just tabernacle? Being that it's got to be dissolved. You got to get out of that house one day. So that everybody you know had to vacate their premises. Because this body, that's all it is, is your house. You on the inside. Ain't a man, a woman, a king, queen, millionaire, Walmart. I won't go. 
I'm saying, I'm trying to figure out now why. <laughs> so as I go in there, I got a nice, somebody was, I don't know whether it's any of the looters made their way up here, but I got a nice gold chain. <laughs> I'm going to have a gold, gangster gold chain. I had an appraisal when she gave it to me, she was worth about $5,000. And that was about 12 years ago. So I'm thinking about that gangster chain. It just fell straight down. And if I work my way through the mud and the silk and fight off the snakes that might be in the car, I might be able to retrieve my gold chain. <laughs>
got to be him. Son's death still got to be him. Not a chief representative, not a prophet, or nobody but Yahweh himself can control that kind of activity. All right, so what we're trying to tell you about is a threefold permanent to Yahweh represented by the cloud, manifest in shape and form, and I'm trying to show how he got the ability to come down and buy his own. Now, they missed him 2,000 years ago. They thought he was a demon. Then they missed him when he was back here with Moses. And they missed him when he was down here in the sea of And it's a blessing that you didn't miss him in either place. Mm -hmm. And the only way that you would know is by having that light spirit, that same spirit in you. Right. That's the only way that you would be able to uh, recognize who it is when you're dealing with. Now, to help verify how he is, this is what he did. Did you read uh, that scripture? John 3 and 12. If I have told you earthly things, I've told you earthly things. And you believe not. You don't believe earthly things. How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? How the world can I tell you about heavenly things? If I can only tell you about if you don't really know nothing about earthly things. So what it really does is this. It takes the earthly. Natural brute beast. Right. And any beast, if 
given proper care, you will have a tendency to hide his beastly characteristics. Right, right. But you put them under the wrong circumstances, right. and they will let you know that they are a beast. That's right. <laughs> Now you can sit up here in Shreveport or Chicago or New York and look down your nose at what they're doing. And the animals bring them up to Chicago and watch on a live screen and put you down there on there and they'll be saying, they're animals. Fact yeah. is, if you don't have the Holy Spirit, that's what you are. But you can fade and fake as long as you ain't under pressure. But put somebody under the right circumstances, that's when you'll see what they're really all about. That's right, because you can't tell what they're really all about right. until they put under some pressure. Right. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Some of us got the nerve to think we're so much better. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you what, I'm telling you what, we'd be wrong right. in trying to put ourselves above somebody else right. not having been in the situation that they're in. Right. Is that right? Yeah. And that's what's so good about Yahweh. Because right. he expects certain things of us. Right. But guess what? He Right. I didn't right. 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 And it's 
a good thing. I don't believe in getting on the kid. You know, we can adopt other methods, but you need the, the method that they use works. I know if you get to do that, them old folks will just look at you. Yeah. You don't have to have a lot of them right If they give you the right look, you're making an assessment. <laughs> You don't know what's wrong, but that look lets you know when you're getting ready to get stoned. So you start making your own self-analysis. Right? And all of a sudden, way back here, uh-oh, I forgot to make a bed. So when you go right and do it, you come out, and then you don't have that look. And you see how that look wasn't that smart? I believe you just with the eyeball look. You say, do you want to do time out? Do you want to have a time out? Do you want to go and sit in the corner? Of it was already done. Right. We're just 
watching the news and seeing it unfold is already done. And you've got to know that. You've got to know that because how would a man, when you first get there, stop the wind and say, I stopped it. And then 31 years later, it goes out with the same cause. Doesn't that let you know that that must have been ready to tear it up then? So he already knew it. But there was a time in which it was going to come to pass. <coughs> and I want you to know that it was not just for New Orleans. It was for the Institute. Physically and spiritually. Of course, physically, when I pulled in the motor, they told me I couldn't get more than $25 worth of gas. Mm -hmm. And they already got shortages all over. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, that's why is that? How do you tell New Orleans, and then you got to pay 50 cents more a gallon on your right. gas, nah. if you can get it? Nah. And then tell me it don't have nothing to do with you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep on pumping. <laughs> Y'all are trying to get everybody's attention yeah. to let us know that we don't have that much longer in this existence. Yeah. It's about time to go out. It's about time to relocate. It's about time to get a new address. Yes, it is. Believe it or not. But it's easy to believe if you were down out. Yeah. That right there, that kind of puts some reality, puts things in perspective on right. this. <clears throat> so the saving was done from the foundation of the world before it was even done yet. Now, when you always takes these ages, you got the ancient the moving age, and the post moving age, and the present age, each age has a start and a finish. And you can look at the start and the finish of these ages to help understand something about how Yahweh's purpose is operating. Now, back here in this ancient living age, and I'm going to maybe give you some scriptural help because I can't remember where they are and I haven't really tried to pinpoint them or remember them. But when Yahweh appeared to Noah, that's the sixth chapter of Genesis, it says that Noah was a just man. And uh, Yahweh found favor in his sight. Genesis 6 and 7. All right. And Yahweh said, I will destroy a man whom I have created from the face of the earth. I'm going to destroy a man. Both man and beast and the creeping things and the birds of the heavens. Read. For it repented me that I have made him. Read. But Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. Noah found grace in the eyes of Yahweh. These are the generations of Noah. Mm -hmm. Noah was a just man and upright in his generation. Mm -hmm. And Noah walked with Elohim. Mm -hmm. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Now let's stop a minute. It says Noah walked with Elohim. These are things that you already know. Now, was Noah walking and Elohim walking beside him? No. When it says Noah walked with Elohim, what we got is Elohim and then Noah. Right. 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 And when Noah walked, <laughs> that's what it says when he said that Noah walked with Elohim. That's what he's talking about. I'm not talking about them walking side by side. Right, if you know the scripture, it doesn't say the same thing about Enoch. That's right. Enoch walked with Elohim. Right. And when they said Enoch walked with Elohim, they described him a little bit better because they said that he was not. That's right. In other words, when you walk with Elohim, you are not. Listen to that now. He walked with Elohim and he was not. For Elohim took it. Right. Are you with me? Right. So when you get ready to walk with Elohim, that's supposed to be the end of you. Right. Is that right? When you walk, Elohim walks. Right. Didn't Dr. Kelly say it? If you didn't know me before 1931, what? Right. Is that right? Why don't you know him anymore? Because he walked with Elohim. Right. And Elohim took it. Right. In other words, he took H.C. Kelly and he walked in it. Right. Isn't that what you want to happen to you? Yeah. You want Elohim to walk. You want to walk with Elohim and Aaron Bryant? Gone. <coughs> Gerald Sonia? Gone. But we want is Elohim walking. Is that right? right? Now, when Yahweh said he found grace in Noah's sight, if you understand that that's still his spirit in Noah, who's he really finding grace with? In other words, there ain't no mercy or grace bestowed on nobody but him, because there's nobody that is worthy of his honor and praise. Is that right? So you can't have Noah looking around for the dust saying that Noah found grace again. <laughs> you know, the old 
they have made now a little bit different than any of the In fact, somebody told me this. Uh, my daughter told me this. Of course, this ain't nothing to do with the purpose of y'all where it's spiritual or anything, so just hold up. So I said, I'm getting another story. She said they should have known when they started naming hurricanes after blacks. You know, this <laughs> That's
if you subtract two from this, that means that Cher was 98 years old when he got off the boat. Mm -hmm. Are you with me? Yeah. He was 98 years old when he got off the ark on the other side. Right? Yeah. Which means when Yahweh spoke to Noah about building the ark, Cher wasn't born. Right. 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 Neither was Ham nor Jacob. Right? right? So what Yahweh basically did when the flood was over, nobody was saved but Shem, Ham, Jacob, their wives, and Mrs. Noah. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But in reality, all Yahweh saved was him and his family. Uh -huh. That's right. He saved him, he saved his bride, okay. and his offspring. Okay. Right? That's all that came over. What have we been trying to say is going on up here? Who's being saved? Yahweh? His bride? New Jerusalem? And his offspring? That's the only one being saved. Now, guess where they were saved? If you go back here, these people I'm trying to show you were saved in Noah before the world began. So they were saved prior to him getting over into the most of the age. When he saved Noah, he saved them. Because of the word world and age aren't they interchangeable? So Shem, Ham, and Jacob was saved in Noah before the world began. Before they were manifest, they were saved. Right. Are you with me? Which is to try to show us. Already saved in him before the world began. Then we showed up in school in 1980 something and said, I'm saved. It's already done. You can't get down here and alter it and change it and fix it. It's already done. Is that right? Right. So, what we want to do is be thankful that that's where salvation was accomplished. It's already done before this age began. Now, Go over there and pick up uh, Matthew. It's around the 23rd chapter. Now, I want down there where it talks about uh, the Bible. No, I want to go and get that stuff about him that's on the house top. But right now, I want you to also go over here to 2 Thessalonians, the 4th chapter, there about 15 minutes ago. First Thessalonians, the 4th chapter, there about 15 minutes ago. It's not first testimony, it's the first chapter. You all know what it is. We're talking about. Uh, no, it's the 24th chapter, Matthew. But that day of Yahweh shall come to the thief in the night. Now, a couple other things I want to talk to you about. I mentioned it in my letter that when these people left, we read over there in Genesis, about the 18th and 19th chapters. Yahweh destroys Sodom. Mm -hmm. When he destroys Sodom, he first goes in and he talks to Abraham about how many rights there might be. And they broke the number down, they broke the number down, they broke the number down, and finally the angel went in. And when he came out, didn't he bring Lot and his family? Mm -hmm. And because Sodom, you know, it was Lot. And his wife, what happened? Some people don't stop and think through this and look at her examine but those women, Lot's daughters, were married. Their husbands didn't leave. Because you know, when they got out there, wasn't it just Lot with his wife and his two daughters? Their husbands didn't come. Now remember, Sodom was a place that was just wholly given to homosexuals. Right. boy doing all these. Now, what would that tell you about their sexual preference? If they didn't really have fun inside me, they would go with their wife and be saved. Now, Lot, with instructions to his family, was to tell them, don't look back. And these children of Israel came up out of Egypt. Do you remember how Yahweh brought them out of Egypt? And they kept talking about at least when you were in Egypt. And, they did that and, and that was shameful and disgraceful. And combined with this situation with Lot, I'm saying for those of you, because there are people 
in that area. They still have homes they can live in. There's still people whose damage was not total dest dest devastation as it is, particularly in New Orleans, and predominantly in New Orleans East. They say it's still underwater 15, 20 feet of water from the industrial canal in this year. Well, about 60 to 70 percent of the New Orleans class lives in that area, as well as the class building. So I'm not talking about those who Yahweh has spared. All this is is a type and a shadow. It's not a reflection one way or the other. It's not even if you decide to go back. It's not a reflection on you. It's principles that Yahweh is trying to you get a point across. And I'm saying that whatever it is, that we've had to lose, don't get up here. Because I'm sure that many of the people have already relocated and started relocation plans to other schools. Uh, some have already got jobs in Arkansas and PG County and uh, Houston and Dallas and San Antonio and some have gone all over and they already have jobs. Already have places to stay. But don't get out wherever you're going and start talking about it, at least when we were in New Orleans. We, yeah. we were in New Orleans. We were in New Orleans. We had to teach it like this. When we were in New Orleans, this is the way we did it. To hell with that! Right. Right. All you're going to do is cause more right. confusion right. and damage, right. then you will help. Right. You ain't in New Orleans. It's gone. That's right. Right. So don't come out like they did. That's right. That's what I'm talking about, at least when we were in New Orleans. Yeah. When we were in New Orleans, our choir always started on time. Well, they know they should start on time and end on time, but it ain't your job to get bad mouth or That's something like right. that. Be happy you got a place to go. That's right. So I hope that we don't have none of that. That's right. Well, wouldn't that be wrong according to this? That's right. But every school in this institute has a different character without the school. That's right. They're preaching the gospel. But no one school is identical to the other school. Right. They got different flavors, different styles, right. ways of doing things. Right. And everybody is <coughs> not going to be a clone of everybody else. That's right. That's right. That's right. So when you go into the grocery store and you see that they got toothpaste, they got Colgate, Crest, Aim, what's the one that's Crest with fluoride, without the white man, tartar control, oxide, with oxide, they got bacon, plain old baking soda. Is that right? They got the Walgreens brand, the Walmart brand. Is that right? But you know what? The good part is they're buying some toothpaste and they're brushing them with nasty teeth. Right. And you don't need to be going in there and say, well, you ought to be using cold white like we did in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. Right. Don't do that. Go to be in health. That's right. They insist. Right. And if they use the white and cold at least you get the teeth. Yeah. Right. 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 Second thing that I want to bring out is there's nothing to look back for. What we should always be doing is looking forward. Right. Now, I'm not saying that means that you can't and shouldn't go back to New Orleans if that's what you choose to do. Right. But this is the dilemma that I had, and I want you all to understand this. They're giving estimates of maybe three months before they get the water out and the city dried out. They've got to find bodies. They've got to decontaminate stuff. Then they've got to try to get power on. Power now that they're not even going to work on that until they get the water out. You can understand. Right. You're an electrician. You don't want to mess around with an electrician. With, with no water, an angle deep water, so they got to do one before they can start on the other. They say that might be another two to three months. Then for those in that area that's totally devastated, they got to go in there now and tear your house down. And then if they got 40,000 homes to rebuild, or even 30,000 homes to rebuild, how long do you think and where are you going to be on this list of 30,000 people to have your stuff torn down and built back up? So it could very well be, and this is what I had to get in my mind, it could very well be that we could be a year and a half to two years before people could actually be back in the city right. living their life. Are you all following me? <laughs> now, the place where class is located, we got a man that owns that building. He wanted to tear it down a long time ago and build something else. Right, 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 right. It's right there by the Dowman and Industrial Canal where the levee broke. That place is shot. Right. The building is old. They're not going to drain it out, wash it down, and rent it back to us. They're going to tear it down. We caught the dickens finding a building large enough in the world 
to accommodate us right. that we could afford. Right. Now, by the time they tear that area down and rebuild it, whatever they do, right. if they had commercial space, it'd be way, way, way past what we could afford. Because mm -hmm. ours was raggedy and broke down and cost us $6,000 a month, was it? Right. $6,000 and was going up every year. Right, right, right. And we can't afford nothing like that. If, if, if they had it there, they probably wouldn't do nothing like that. Because you know when they tear stuff up, isn't that when the city planners come in? And they're going to do it just right and do this and do that. This is residential only and this is... <laughs> but people in New Orleans, just like me, would be trying to make our decisions based on getting back home. We would go somewhere and say, well, I'm going to be here for three or four months and I'm going back home. Mm -hmm. And all of their effort would be trying to get back home. Now, there are, as I said, there are some people that homes will be fine. But the great majority, I don't think, are. From what you've heard, G, Pat, do you all agree with what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, at a minimum, I would have to suspend classes for the next two years. Mm -hmm. If you're suspending classes for two years and we say time is short, don't that sound like a permanent suspension? Yes. But as long as you got suspension in your mind, you're going to be trying to work your way back. Right now, people are going to need jobs. They're going to need places to stay. Their economy was based on New Orleans. No New Orleans, no income. So they can't sit around for six months with no income waiting to get back home. Now, I, I, I hope you, you, you follow what I'm saying. So the only thing that I can do to help them, because right now there's a lot of empathy out there. You can, and I was, I was joking, but just a serious. You can go out now, people are helping you with your deposit. They're helping you with your first and last month's rent. They're giving you the first two months' rent free because you're a flood victim. Mm -hmm. They're helping you with jobs mm -hmm. because you're a flood victim. Right, that's right. You can go in and say, look, my name is Joe. I lived in New Orleans. I was tired. My whole family came up here, but we just got flooded. I wiped out. Everything I got was lost. If you're smart, you said, everything I got was lost. <laughs> <laughs> Now that hurts, Gene. 
but it's the best for the people. Right. And I don't care what we've done, everything we've done was for the benefit of the people. Right. I've given my life for the New Orleans Press. Somebody said, that's all I've done. And I'm doing it now by saying it's time to shut it down. Right. You do what the knowledge and understanding that you have which will be best for you. And if one day it brings you back to New Orleans, God is so merciful. But he's already given us a school right there. So whether we reestablish New Orleans or not, don't you have one on the West Bank? And in the beginning, and the end is declared from the beginning. And in the beginning, there was one school. And in the end, one school. So I'm confident that this is what we all will be A reservation about doing it. Uh, there are a couple other things I want to mention to you before the time gets away. As you all know, um, we've got uh, monies coming in from the brethren from various places. And they don't mean to try to help <coughs> New Orleans brand new members financially. Uh, the international board, which you'll find out, already kicked out $40,000 out of the international trade. We're doing it is $40,000. You know what I think about it. Since we've never asked the board for anything. Right. We've always tried to donate regularly to the board. And we weren't asking for nothing now. And I'm almost ashamed that we're accepting it. We got a plan for that though, because New Orleans branch has over hundred thousand dollars in their checking account. And when you withdraw the branch, all of those assets go back to international. So I'm gonna request that they take their money back. Right. Somebody said, What you too proud to take money? I don't believe that the Orleans is that destitute. So, right. We were going to institute an right. right. physical research to go in their treasury and pay $40,000 to help us. But I believe that our brothers and our sisters, mm -hmm. and from that that is operating in us, will be sufficient to make it on our own. Right. Right. That's right. So I'm telling you in advance. I'm going to ask them. Not because I'm on the trustee board, too. Right. They're my people just as much as they are yours. I'm trying to tell them to take their money back. That's right. right. That's right. That's the way I feel. That's right. Now they may not do it, but that's the way I feel. Yeah. And then when we send ours there, right. take the forty thousand off the top, yeah. reimburse yourself for what you spent. Personal donations is a different matter. I'm not rejecting that because that's out of the goodness of somebody's heart. Mm -hmm. And then there'll still be sixty thousand to the good. Nah, that's right. Are you with me? That's right. right. We're going to try to meet this afternoon. We're going to find a way to try to distribute that. John Hayes and our state board is going to have a terrible job. Um, I have got the same decision to make the two all, but where am I going to live? And since I do disaster work, they've been trying to get me back to work, and I'm going to go back to it. And I suspect that I'll probably be working for the next year. So I don't need to make a decision on where I'm going to live for the next year for the live out of my car and out of the hotel. Uh, he doesn't know this yet, but I'm going to you still have uh, you know, New Orleans. The New Orleans are, I don't know whether, I don't know whether we got it straight or not yet. The New Orleans are at state headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I thought it was, but we changed stuff so quick. We don't care about stuff like that, so it gets changed and you don't even think twice about it. Okay, so that means we're going to have to have a new headquarters for the state. I'm going to suggest that it be Shreveport. Uh, Shreveport would be Shreveport and Lafayette, actually the next two oldest schools. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> uh, so we'll probably have that, and I need the people in Shreveport to recognize that you're not only Shreveport, man, but you will be representing the state as our state headquarters. I'm going to ask you to keep that in mind because Somebody's got to be representing the state. And uh, Gene is the acting dean of Louisiana in my absence. Right. So I think this would be appropriate and a proper place for that. Uh, I don't know what we put about a role in our regional headquarters. We'll figure that out. 
Well, I think I'm, I told my wife I'd like to get one of them mobile homes. Mobile homes, you know, you put it in all stuff in there, and it's an old. <laughs> Pull up in your driveway and hang around in your backyard for a couple of weeks. <laughs>
the Chevrolet wears in the face. I don't know what I got to do. It's got to be better. Is that right? That's what I'm saying. Now, Lisa is able to do exceedingly fun. That's rough. That's rough. Oh, that's rough. Whatever I could come up with to ask y'all is that. And he's already going to do better than that. That's right. He did better than that when I got to New Orleans. Some of you have talked. Well, let me tell you, I thought I was going to go down there, preach the gospel, put up a few charts, and about nine or ten people in the world was going to hear me. Is that what I'm talking about? I never thought we'd have. Uh, you know, the largest school in the country, 600 and something people down there. I never thought we would have branches come out of us to the point where Louisiana was the largest population in the entire institute. I never thought I'd be a state dean or a regional dean. Never thought that. So he already did it. Look what we did. That's right. That's right. Now look what he did through this. I'll have a better friend than right now. We don't hardly talk anymore because we're both so busy handling stuff. <laughs> it, me and him sitting down there in a, a Mohammed temple, Muslim temple, back in the 70s. <laughs> and you know, them brothers, they would search you down, catch you down, they would stand up there like that. Neither one of them nor I could fight, but Joker told us, no, Joker told us he challenged us like we didn't know what we were talking about. Oh, well, now you're done messed up. Right. That's right. We don't want to go. Yeah. Don't want to be down there. I don't care if you don't come to class. But when you try to challenge this teacher like it don't stand up, we got to go. Got to go. We went down there, stood up and talked to you. They searched us down, patted us down, took all our stuff, brought us right up to the front. Now, I mean, we're in, the, we're in the hood. We're in the hood from a hood standpoint. <laughs> 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 we from the hood. You know, if you're in the hood, you look at that and say, that's the hood. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. But see, we got this ministry, we think not. And all we want them to do is we want to show up and promise we would, let them say what they want to say, and then we were going to leave. That was our game plan. Man got up there and said, uh, talking about the white man being the devil. And this, that, and that. Did anybody have any questions? Well, we want everybody who wants to join, please stand up and follow us in the back to join. So all three rows, everybody got up and went in the back to me and her. So, and, uh, put the spotlight on us now. We didn't say nothing, we just looking. Then they started preaching again. Mm -hmm. I thought the sermon was over. I had another 30 minute sermon. But if you don't want to join, then well, and that's what they said. Well, if you ain't joining, you didn't get up with the rest of them. You must have some questions. Something you must not agree with. Now, all I want to do is go find <laughs> I am Christians and we don't say not. We can hang out with this gospel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I got a problem with what you're saying. No. My Bible reason when I see in the book, the devil is a spirit. He ain't black or white, and we ain't going along with no white man being the devil. That was a spirit, and if I, in my neighborhood, if somebody rips me off, it's a, a, a colorless demon, probably in a black guy. Never let us down. Right. We don't ever take any right. obstacle, ever, right. and think that you can't overcome it. Right. 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 So don't faint, go strong, hold your head up. That's right. That's right. Give unto others as others have given unto you, right. and you'll be greatly blessed. Right. And I will be. That's In other words, right. I'm, getting a, I'm getting a double portion. Right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> I am. That's right. If you don't, 
because you don't think you will. I think I know I will. All right, so I'm waiting on my double. I'll see y'all whenever I see you. Thank you very much. Somebody get this. Guy.